Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Smart Money channel. This is the first of several videos that we will be doing in English. Uh, thank you to everyone who's supporting us and our videos and have also asked for content in English language. Today's video, as you can see, is about top five momentum small cases that are available to us. Now, uh, most of you may have heard about small case if you have, if you have heard about momentum investing and if you're doing a lot of DIY investing. You may have heard about small cases and some of you probably are invested in small cases for some time now. So you have seen how it operates and you know you have also probably seen a cycle in that. So uh, we have figured that there are no comprehensive tools or analysis available to compare one small case with the other to find out which small case is doing better. Before we go into the video further, I would like to say that we are not SEBI registered advisors. I'm not a SEBI registered advisor. And uh, this is exactly the methodology that I follow if ever I have to take a call about which small case that I have to invest in. And I'm sharing the exact methodology with you. This is not a suggestion. And uh, I request you to not take it as a financial advice. Please do your own uh, research, due diligence, speak to your financial advisor and manager before you take any call. So going into the video, uh, like I said that, you know, there are no comprehensive tools to compare which small case is better than the other. But again, before uh, going into that, one might have a doubt that, you know, why should I compare small cases? It's not like they're mutual funds or stocks or anything like that. Why am I comparing small cases? Because I will simply go into the small case website. I will check out which small case is giving the highest return and pick that, right? Isn't it that simple? No. Let me show you several reasons as to why one might need to analyze or, you know, compare to find out which small. So the small case that I'm showing here is a very, very random choice. In fact, we can take anything. And this is not to say that, you know, this small case is good or this small case is bad or the manager is doing it well or not doing it well. This is in no particular order. It's a very, very random choice that I have taken. Now, if you see over here on the screen that you will see that the three year uh, compounded annual growth rate is listed as 46.1%, right? Yes, that is correct. Of course, that is very, very correct. But however, there are also ex some expenses that are associated with buying small cases as well. So if, you all, if you're already in invested in mutual funds, you'll understand that there is an expense ratio, right? So it could be the cost of transactions, it could be fees, costs, everything together. So for small cases as well, we do have these costs and fees. In fact, when we just scroll down onto the page, we'll understand, you know, what exactly the returns are. If you see over here, the absolute three-year return could be 46.41%. But if I take the same thing for three-year period, it is going to show me 19.83%. Now, does that mean that this 46.41 is wrong? No, that's not true. There are several factors that affect our returns with respect to every kind of an investment, right? There, there are opportunity costs associated with every kind of investment. Similarly, for small cases as well, one cost or, you know, uh, two costs that I can think about, which are really crucial to affect your small case and the returns that they bring in are one costs and fees, right? Costs are subscription costs or fees that, that you pay for. There is a subscription fee that you pay for every investment once you do it, right? And there is also a transaction cost. Now, what are these transaction costs? They're paid to the platform in which uh, you, you are transacting from. For example, small case, use, uh, small case uses Zerodha and you're also paying, uh, you know, some cost, transaction costs to Zerodha. These costs include uh, the transaction charges when we rebalance our portfolios, when the strategy itself rebalances for us. Sometimes when we go, you know, when we see a little loss or profit and when we sell the, uh, you know, when we rebalance, when we sell some stocks and buy some more stocks, we're probably also pumping in some more transaction costs, right? So essentially what I mean is that one must ensure that they're also looking at all of the cost adjusted returns before taking a call. Now, 19.83 is definitely a good return if you are looking at you know, one lakh invested over three years, even with the costs, right? It's definitely beating at least the nifty 50, but it's definitely not 46.41% either. 
right so then it becomes important for us to understand what are the costs and fees the fees that are involved when we take a particular small case now let me also while being in the same on the same page show you how your invested value changes your returns right at the moment the invested value that we have assumed is 1 lakh rupees let me say i want to make this 10 lakhs now when i do that how does it affect me so it affects me simply in this way that the fixed costs that are associated let's say with subscription fees are going to remain the same okay so when the fi fixed costs remain the same your investable amount is much more than what you have when you just had 1 lakh rupees right and of course the transaction costs are also going to be similar that is pretty low therefore giving you an overall return of 28.90% if you remember earlier with 1 lakh rupees we saw that our return was somewhere around 19% right 19 to 20% but if we invest 10 lakh rupees then our return suddenly jumps up uh, to 28.99% which is 29% almost that is a huge difference so when comparing so this is why we also need to compare you know how each small case is doing under what circumstances there is also another thing that we need to you know uh, that 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 factors in as to why we need to compare small cases and find out which one is the best it is something to do with our time periods right so there are one, one may be one may want to invest in one year one may want to invest in two years or three years or five years etc so what is the duration in which i should see you know the returns because if i when i have changed it into one year suddenly my returns are like 57.46% so why should i even invest for 3 years why don't i compare it with one year and then uh, think that you know the returns are really great there are very high returns made so let me invest 10 lakhs for one year maybe that is a good option let me show you a quick calculation um about a study that was conducted for an investment uh, the, this is the results of the returns that have been gotten by investing in a momentum strategy and also nifty 100 So, if you see the one-year returns have a wide range, they are ranging somewhere between minus twenty-five percent, around minus twenty-five percent to plus sixty-five percent. So, the range of returns is really high, which means sometimes one may fall here, sometimes one may fall here, and sometimes one may fall here. So, there is a lot of volatility, and there are so many in-between points. However, as we move through the time periods, if you look at three years. there's more stabilization of the returns right you can see how the returns have been stabilized it is ranging somewhere slightly above 0% to let's say plus 40% or 42% so when we look at that there is some stabilization that's happening as we go as we increase our time period similarly 5 years looks like the most stable option right so it's hardly hitting negative returns and it's not giving you exorbitant um high returns as well that's because through time our returns are also stabilized so all of these volatilities that we see the fluctuations or the ranges that we see sort of get added into our returns and we see stability so what these what this study essentially is telling us is that you know one must look at either 3 years or 5 years returns to understand how exactly the performance of a fund or a strategy is doing now going back to this uh even for our small cases what we do is we usually take 3 or 5 years to make a comparison now moving on we also need comparisons because we want to understand if our cost adjusted investment return is beating at least the benchmarks now what do i mean by benchmarks benchmarks could be something like nifty 50 benchmarks could be something like like bse sensex or there is also a particular benchmark uh called nifty 200 momentum 30 index which is focused entirely on uh momentum uh investing so when we are putting in additional um you know amount of time or amount of money or effort etc i think it's imperative for us to feel that or imperative for us to get some extra returns so for example what i mean is uh we for a 3 year tagger percentage of uh, nifty bees itself has given somewhere around 16.29% right so if a small case is not giving me more than that 
I think I should not even take that work or that extra energy to go and invest in a small case. Instead, I can invest all of my money in Nifty 50 Bs and, you know, sit back and relax. Similarly, another benchmark that I've spoken about is the momentum index. Now, the momentum index in a three, uh, three year period has given somewhere around 27.27, right? So if the first benchmarking is Nifty, then the next benchmarking is also this momentum index. And if our small case does not uh, exceed the returns of this index, then I think we are better off investing in this index rather than going out and looking for uh, small cases, specifically momentum small cases and investing in them. Now, having established all of this, uh, the point I was trying to put across is that we do need comparison of uh, you know small cases to understand what exactly their returns are because the returns of small cases are influenced by factors like how much investable amount do I have? How much time do I want to be invested in? What are my costs, fixed costs and uh, you know subscription costs, exact other costs and fees associated with them? And also if my small case or my strategy is beating at least two benchmarks that we have discussed previously. So when we do a comparison of all of this, that will change the dynamic of how we look at um, the returns of small cases. So now we are not linearly looking at a return. That is, I'm not just going into a website typing for a momentum small case, looking at the return and saying, let me invest in this. Instead, we will take a very informed decision about how much time I'm willing to spend in the market invested, how much money am I willing to invest, uh, what is the kind of return I'm going to see during all of this, and is that return good? Is it beating the benchmark so that I have to take this effort further? Now, having established that we need a detailed comparison and uh, analysis of our small cases, I will now take you into the methodology or the evaluation process that we have used to uh, bring out this top five list. So the first one is, of course, to select your universe. We have gone to the small case website and we have taken in all of the uh, listed momentum strategies over there. Yeah. So we have firstly gone to the small case website and selected all of the small cases that are being uh, listed by several managers over here. We have found that there are 39 unique, uh, sorry, there are 39 strategies offered by 17 unique managers. So all of these 39 small cases are momentum related. Now, the next thing is that we had to shortlist um, strategies that have been running for more than three years. I think uh, what we have discussed before about the time period is exactly the reason why we have gone for three years. Now, one might ask, why are we not taking five years? And that would be a very valid question. And the response to that is that there are only two or three small cases which we have found are running for more than five years. So essentially, you don't even have a basket of small case strategies to compare e each other to, right? So if, if, if I take you back to the chart, in fact, even three years is pretty stabilized in that sense in comparison to uh, the one year. It's not all that volatile. So we have shortlisted um 17 funds that are you know running for more than three years you'll see that the the time period which are marked in green uh, we have 17 strategies those have been running for three years or more now next uh we have also established that the first level of elimination would be the ones which are giving us uh returns less than nifty 50 over three years and for that the nifty 50 return that we have taken again like i've shown before is 16.29. So any fund that is less than 16.29 automatically gets eliminated. So leaving us with essentially 12 small case strategies. The next level of selection and elimination is to see how many funds have performed or how many strategies have performed better than three years return of the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 index the return of which over here has been taken as 27.27%. So anything, any strategy that is giving us less than 27.27 has been eliminated. Over here, we can see that around seven funds ha are, have given us returns less than 27.27. Essentially, we have ended up with five top funds themselves.
Now, even in the top five funds, how will I know? Are returns enough? Uh, are returns the only thing that we will be considering while ranking them, right? We need to rank ours from top to bottom, even if it is five. So for that, a very good indicator is something called as a Sharpie ratio. Let me introduce you to what a Sharpie ratio is. So Sharpie ratio is essentially the excess return that we get from a portfolio, right? So what I mean by this is, I will take you through this through an example. Let us say that there are some risk-free, entirely risk-free investments. Of course, over here, the caveat is that one may argue that no investment is risk-free, including fixed deposit, term deposits. But for the sake of this assignment, let us assume, let us work with the assumption that our government securities, T-bills, fixed deposits, term deposits, all of them are risk-free returns. So if we assume that the risk-free returns hover somewhere around 6% at the moment, current moment, if our portfolio is giving 8% return, then the difference is 2%. So our excess return is 2%, right? So to get this excess of 2% return, you would have put some additional um, effort into it. Essentially meaning we are not investing in risk-free returns. We have taken our portfolio elsewhere. So we are not only taking the time and effort to understand and build the portfolio, we, are, we also have a risk with the way the portfolio works and provides us returns. So for these excess 2% returns, I would have taken some risk. Now, what is that risk? And how do I calculate it? So the risk is essentially denoted by the standard deviation of the portfolio. So if we assume that the standard deviation for this case is 10%, then my portfolio, which that means that my portfolio returns fluctuate somewhere between minus 10 to plus 10 in that range, in the range of the standard deviation. Now for a 2% excess return, if I'm taking a 10% risk, then that essentially means that my Sharpe ratio comes down to 2 divided by 10, which is 0 0.2. That translate lo translates loosely into that the risk I am taking does not give me enough reward. I'm taking higher risk to get very small amount of reward. So my risk to reward ratio or the Sharpie ratio over here is not positive. It's not working for me. So what is the easiest way that, you know, we can, you know, rank, uh, et cetera, is that we take one as the benchmark. If the Sharpie ratio is one, then the risk that I'm taking is giving me enough reward. Therefore, any strategy that is giving us more than one or which is give, which is having more than one as its Sharpie ratio is something we are in, interested in. Therefore, what we do is we consider a list and we have we have used the Sharpie ratio to sort of organize the top two, uh, top five strategies. Now, there is also one small doubt that may arise that the last uh, the, 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 the strategy, it, which is listed as the last or the fifth in ranking, has a higher Sharpie ratio than others. So here, the logic is that if I take this fund to the second place, then the returns have a huge, massive 5% difference. So I am not exactly doing any justice to the amount of return as well, percentage of return as well. Therefore, giving precedence to return over here, and of course, considering Sharpie ratios, we have ranked these five funds as the top five momentum small cases. And here is the list. And this is how we have arrived at the top five momentum small cases for the month of May 2024. Uh, now, we also plan to do this series every month to show how fluctuate, how, uh, you know, several factors affect the rankings. How do we, uh, you know, how do we then judge? In fact, do we always get five? Uh, top five strategies or how, how is the scene going to be? So we, we are going to start a monthly series to understand how the momentum small cases are moving and how they are being ranked, etc. to provide you an in-depth analysis. Thank you for joining us here. And uh, we also have a blog that we are starting. Uh, the first blog would be about the same thing. So in case you want to go back and refer to the charts or the presentation or the pictures that the images that have been shown here, uh, I will link the blog in the description. Please free, feel free to visit our blog. And thank you for joining us once again. We'll meet you soon with another video.